You might not remember this, but your soul purposely came here to be on this ride. It knew that humanity would be going through a time of transition where we'd be moving from one era into another, and it wanted to be part of that experience. Your soul knew that this time would involve a lot of hardships, chaos, and monumental changes on both a global and personal level. And guess what? It still wanted to participate. The reason is because your soul saw this transition as a great opportunity to accelerate its own development and attain spiritual mastery in just one single lifetime. My name is Vicki Lin, and welcome to the Higher Perspective Podcast, a show about seeing the truth to heal. Every week, I explore the non-physical realms that make up most of reality to bring awareness to the importance of spiritual health, inner healing, and energetics so that you can awaken to the truth of who you are. Welcome back to episode six. It's been a long time, I know. I am very sorry. I did not plan on taking such a long pause in between episodes, and I do feel guilty about it, but it has honestly been so intense for me. I don't really have words to describe what has happened, except that my body has gone through the ringer. Life has been a roller coaster where I got spun into chaos and experienced a lot of emotional pain because of that. And spiritually, I feel like I've entered into a whole new world, which I'm just learning how to navigate in. That's a lot to handle in just a couple of months. Not to mention, I felt like I was dragging myself through all of that on a tank that was only 20% full. So I really needed time to patiently allow myself to go through all of that to completion before I would be able to show up fully and help others. That's why I haven't been able to give much of myself here. Now that I've regained equilibrium and finally feel incredible again, I'm ready to get back into doing what I love, which is creating healing music and sharing what I've learned in my life through my podcast on a more consistent basis. I know there's a great need for support in the world at this time, and I want to provide that with all of my love. Many people are currently going through hard times, and if you're wondering why this is happening, it actually has to do with energy. For the past few months, but especially recently, we got hammered with very strong electromagnetic radiation from our sun and outer space. These are highly charged particles that have a very fast spin. When they hit Earth, they have real consequences that impact us physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. I touch on this idea in episode one, so you can go back and listen to that one for more information. But in summary, if you're dealing with a lot of problems in life right now, or you're wondering why the world has gone completely crazy, it's because of the impact these cosmic energies have on us. They have been coming in and slowly building up for several years. However, in the past month or so, they have taken off exponentially, so the pressure is really high right now. Can you guess what pressure does? It pushes out all the problems people have suppressed, denied, and avoided dealing with in life and brings them all into conscious reality so that they can be seen, accepted, understood, and then integrated. This is what healing is all about. In other words, it's time to take responsibility for your life. Let me give you an analogy to help you better understand what I mean with these energies. Imagine there's two gigantic buckets of water, one that holds clean water and another one that holds muddy water with sludge settled at the bottom. You can think of the incoming cosmic energies as the bucket of clean water and you as a bucket of muddy water. The sludge at the bottom is a representation of all the issues about yourself that you've suppressed and problems in your life you've avoided dealing with. 
as cosmic energy floods the planet as it is doing right now, it's like taking that massive bucket of clean water and pouring it into the bucket of muddy water. What do you think is going to happen? The clean water is going to forcefully push up all the settled sludge and bring all that nasty stuff up to the surface, creating total chaos as it happens. This is exactly what is going on in the world right now. The incoming energies are pouring in and pushing up all the suppressed toxins, traumas, wounds, limiting beliefs, and emotional pain buried within everyone. By the way, these things are really just dense energies lodged inside of everyone. Since energy is invisible to most people, unless you have a strong sense of self-awareness and sensitivity, you're not going to be able to know you're carrying these kinds of energies inside of you. So spirit's way of helping you become aware of them is by physicalizing them in your life as problems you need to deal with. They will show up in your body as health issues, in life as relationship, money, or work problems, in the world as socioeconomic and political conflict, and spiritually as psychic attacks or a sense of hopelessness. Just know that every single person on the planet is being affected by these energies in some way, but not everybody has the awareness of it. At a time like this, it's extremely important to be on top of your healing work and maintain a regular practice of clearing energy. That is what will ground you and keep you stable as the world spins out of control. You don't have to overthink things in terms of how to do it. All that is required from you is a willingness to face your problems, take action in your life to solve them one step at a time, and then reflect on what those problems are trying to show you about yourself. That's it. As you deal with these problems in your life, you're doing outer work. And as you learn the spiritual lessons those problems are trying to teach you about yourself, you're doing inner work. The combination of doing both inner and outer work is how you'll genuinely overcome your problems and transmute negative energy in your life into light. That is something you can do on your own, but I'll be honest, it's difficult and painful work. So you might want to consider getting support from either a therapist, healer, or mentor who can guide you through it. If you choose not to address the problems in your life and continue to sweep them under the rug, you need to know that you're going to be signing up for some very challenging times ahead. To give you an idea of where we are and where we're going, I would say that the last three years was the prologue of the book. The events that occurred during that time were things that needed to happen to set the stage for the story to unfold over the next decade and more. Right now, we are beginning chapter one, so things are just getting started. If you're already drowning at the start of chapter one, and there's nine more chapters to go in this book that are all jam-packed with drama, How are you going to make it through? This is why healing work is so important and you really can't be procrastinating on it anymore. I have faith that the ending will be a happy one, but until we get there, the ride is going to be extremely rough. I want to stress that the future is not set in stone. We are consciously creating it with the choices we make in every moment. So it's important to be mindful of what you are choosing every day with your thoughts and actions. Every choice we make in our personal life contributes to the greater collective choice. And that greater collective choice is what will determine the trajectory of humanity. This makes the times we are living in extremely exhilarating, yet also scary, because the outcome depends on whether humanity is willing to put in the hard work and there's no certainty to that. The only thing I am certain about is that these cosmic energies will continue to increase, which means even more deeply suppressed things will be brought up to the surface to be healed. So trials and tribulations are going to continue to escalate. This is why energy in the world can feel so heavy and chaotic right now. 
everyone's sludge is being pushed up and projected outwards. And that is not supposed to be a pretty sight. Now, I want to talk about the body because I know a lot of people are experiencing ongoing symptoms that they can't make sense of. Some examples include fatigue, insomnia, GI problems, migraines, general body aches, mental or emotional instability, and being dazed all the time. These can be related to the incoming cosmic energies, which the New Age spiritual community refers to as ascension symptoms. But I personally don't think it's a good idea to carelessly lump everything under a New Age umbrella term. Because of my academic background, I prefer to look at it from a biophysics perspective to avoid being ignorant of something that could be a lot more serious. Let me explain. First of all, I want to say that there is such a thing as ascension symptoms. However, if you address them as they come up, they should only last a couple of hours to a few days at most. Genuine ascension symptoms are actually a result of your body's inability to process spiritual energy efficiently. They are a sign that there are problems with how energy runs through your body, and that is not a good thing. When electromagnetic radiation from the sun and outer space arrives onto the planet, we take in those frequencies through our energy body, which actually extends out very far. These energies filter down several layers of structure before they come into our crown chakra. From there, the energy flows down the spine into all the different meridian lines, weaving through each chakra, and eventually it gets taken up by our cells. Any excess energy gets grounded into the earth. This pathway I just described is how energy flows through a healthy person living a natural lifestyle. The problem is, nowadays, most people's energy body is in a very bad condition because of all the emotions and trauma they're suppressing, the unnatural lifestyle that modern society has normalized, and an overall lack of regular maintenance. Just like how you take daily showers to maintain your physical hygiene, you need to care for your energy body the same way. But most people go through their entire life without ever getting a clearing, so can you imagine how bad their energetic hygiene is? A lot of people have blockages where the energy gets stuck and isn't able to flow smoothly through their system. These blockages create resistance and that leads to a backlog of energy. The resistance and the backlog is expressed as different symptoms in the body. For the body to process all this excess electrical energy, it needs to be given resources to do that kind of work. Resources typically come in the form of nutrients you consume. For example, if you've noticed yourself eating a lot more food recently, it's probably because your body needs fuel to process all the excess energy it's receiving, and food is an excellent way to provide that. If you're experiencing the opposite where you have no appetite and you're not eating much food, it could be because your body is busy carrying out deep internal transfigurations and is focusing on healing itself. Every body is different, so this may not be true for you. The important thing is for you to learn how to understand the message your body is communicating to you and respond appropriately. Another extremely important resource for your body is minerals. Make sure you supplement your diet with sufficient amounts of macro and trace minerals. Nowadays, unless you're growing your own food and putting minerals into your soil, the fruits and vegetables you're eating are most likely deficient in them. Minerals help conduct electricity in your body. During a time like this when there's such a huge demand on your body to process large amounts of incoming data or electrical energy, you need to make sure you are well mineralized. I hope this helps you better understand what genuine ascension symptoms really are. It's your body attempting to communicate to you that something is wrong and it's asking for help. It's not something you should ignore or wait for it to pass. That's very bad advice that could crash your nervous system and or cause chronic issues to develop. 
So listen to your body and give it what it needs. If you do that and find your symptoms continue to persist, you're probably dealing with something else and you really should take it seriously. Continuing to think it's only ascension symptoms resulting from your frequency rising is delusional thinking that can land you in a dangerous situation. There's an interesting book I recommend you read called The Invisible Rainbow by Arthur Fitzenberg. He talks about how new technological discoveries implemented into society over the years seem to coincidentally correlate to the onset of new diseases in humanity. Specifically, he talks about how the electrical environment that we are immersed in impacts human health and causes something he refers to as electrical illness. Nowadays, we are constantly surrounded by man-made artificial frequencies made up of Wi-Fi, radio frequencies, cell towers, satellites, and so forth. There are also a variety of metal particles in the air from geoengineering initiatives. Metals conduct electricity, so the presence of them in the air means our airwaves are constantly transmitting these artificial frequencies to us. We are electromagnetic beings, so these artificial frequencies clash with our natural energy signature, and they end up disrupting our biorhythms, affecting our mind negatively, and can also create physical problems. For example, did you know that Wi-Fi frequencies can cause inflammation in the hypothalamus? That's a part of your brain responsible for physiological processes like sleep, body temperature, mood, appetite, and blood pressure. All of those processes will be negatively affected if this part of your brain is having issues. Here's another example. Did you also know that Wi-Fi frequencies can exacerbate the growth of infection in your body? If you have undiagnosed parasitic, viral, retroviral, bacterial, fungal, or mold infections, which I personally think everyone has at least one of those nowadays, exposure to man-made artificial frequencies will cause those bugs to proliferate more aggressively and produce more potent biotoxins in the body. If you look up the list of symptoms for EMF radiation sickness, infections like parasites or biotoxin illness, you will see that they are very similar to so-called ascension symptoms. I hope you're starting to see where I'm trying to go with this and why I said earlier that it can be very dangerous to believe these symptoms are just a sign you're getting a spiritual upgrade. You may in fact be dealing with something much more serious. If you don't investigate and take action to fix it, you can end up in a really bad situation. Sadly, if you go to your medical doctor about these symptoms, they're not going to understand what really is going on or even be able to help you. It's because these are not physical issues that can be fixed with biochemical solutions. They're spiritual problems resulting from energetic imbalances. Medical doctors are not educated in or trained to care for your spiritual health. Would you go to a baker to get your car fixed? No, you wouldn't. You'd go to a mechanic. Well, it's the same idea here. You need to look for someone who understands spiritual health and is trained in psycho, spiritual, and energetic modalities to help you address these issues. There are many alternative healthcare practitioners and healers out there who do this kind of work, including me. So if you need assistance, feel free to reach out and contact me. These incoming energies do not just impact people on a personal level. They also have a global effect where they will push up all the collective sludge. So be prepared for the world stage to get even more crazy as all the atrocities, lies, and crimes committed in the shadows of the world get brought into the public's awareness. We're talking about very dark truths here that have gone on for many years, very evil things committed and deliberately hidden from the public eye. Revealing these truths will be extremely traumatic, but unfortunately, there's really no way around it. Healing requires them to be brought into conscious awareness and integrated. 
An example of this would be the movie Sound of Freedom that recently came out. It's based on a true story of child trafficking, which is a very real problem in our world that many people turn a blind eye to. The movie is a gentle way to bring this dark truth into the public's awareness so that humanity can start healing the shadow aspect of society. I personally don't think these dark global truths will all come out at the same time through a full disclosure. They have to be dripped out slowly over time to avoid shocking the collective psyche and traumatizing humanity further, which could lead to mass psychosis or even death. People are already carrying so much unconscious personal trauma and struggling to deal with those. There's really not too much mental capacity left to face massive societal trauma right now. That's why the reveal has to happen slowly over time under divine guidance. If all this seems a little overwhelming to you, just take a few deep breaths and come into your heart space to calm down. Unfortunately, there's not much you can do about the unfoldment of life, except learn to accept things for what it is and do your best to put one foot forward at a time. Know that You've been strapped into the ride called life and that the roller coaster has already taken off. So at this point, why not try to sit back and enjoy the experience? You might not remember this, but your soul purposely came here to be on this ride. It knew that humanity would be going through a time of transition where we'd be moving from one era into another and it wanted to be part of that experience. Your soul knew that this time would involve a lot of hardships, chaos, and monumental changes on both a global and personal level. And guess what? It still wanted to participate. The reason is because your soul saw this transition as a great opportunity to accelerate its own development and attain spiritual mastery in just one single lifetime. Basically, your soul wanted the full experience of moving from darkness into light and to feel the entire spectrum of frequencies from low to high because that would be the best way to test its character and help it evolve into its highest divine expression while still being in a physical body. When you can remember this truth, you will start to understand the purpose to life and why all these things are happening you'll start to wake up from the illusion and see life as a game that your soul chose to play in order to self-actualize in human form. Hopefully, this helps you understand why we are being hammered with all these intense cosmic energies. Spirituality has everything to do with energy and how those frequencies impact the mind, body, and soul. The incoming energies are designed to bring up all the issues buried within us so that we can learn to master ourselves in this lifetime and then live the best life ever. The more intense these incoming energies get, the more that will accelerate the process to help us achieve that goal. But what many people don't realize about acceleration is you don't just jump from a low vibrational state in life into a high one and have all your problems disappear into thin air. A lot of steps are involved in that transition and each of those steps requires you to do hard work. You can speed up the process like what we are doing right now collectively, but as you may be starting to realize, this is actually the way harder path because everything gets compressed. You can think of it like completing a four year university degree in just one year. All the lessons still have to be learned and all the assignments still have to be completed. You can't jump grades or skip any of your homework. This is because in thermodynamics, there's a law in nature that states energy cannot be created or destroyed. So dark energy that you carry when you're in a low vibrational state needs to be transmuted into light energy in order for you to move into a higher vibrational state. These energies cannot be destroyed. They can only be changed into something different. The process of transmutation is very hard work on your body, 
mind, and soul. When you speed things up, you have to deal with all that heavy energy in your life in a much shorter time frame. The workload becomes way more intense compared to if you were to spread it out over a longer period of time. This pressurization is what makes acceleration the harder path. It can bring a lot of stress, anxiety, and pain to your mind, body, and soul, which is what a lot of people are experiencing right now. However, even with that, we are still collectively choosing this accelerated path and sticking to it because we all desperately want change in our personal lives as well as in the world. We don't want to continue living in a dystopian society anymore. And instead, we want to move into a utopian world where we can experience things like peace, love, joy, and abundance. To get there though, we have to face the most painful things in life that we've avoided dealing with and actually resolve them. You cannot take all that heavy energetic baggage with you into the utopian world. So that's why you're being asked to do all this hard work to clear it now. If you've taken responsibility for your life and have been diligent in doing your inner and outer work over the years, then you have nothing to fear. The future is going to be incredibly amazing for you and life will be filled with a lot of blessings. Spirituality is a very individual journey, so your experiences are not going to be something you can compare with others. Just focus on your own life, not other people's or the world, and remember that you are the one creating your life. There's actually a term for this whole process that is taking place across humanity. It's called the Great Spiritual Awakening. It has been known and anticipated by ancient civilizations for many thousands of years, so it's something that is divinely planned. On a spiritual level, the outcome of this event is extremely important because it will affect a multitude of dimensional realities, timelines, and worlds, so a lot is at stake. There is a battle going on where different sides are trying to influence the outcome a certain way in their favor, but there's a lot to say about that, so I'll have to get into it in another episode. Spiritual awakening means consciousness expansion. So this process is about humanity seeing reality in a brand new way or from a higher and more expanded perspective. As consciousness expands, so does self-awareness. If we dig a little deeper, what that really means is everyone is going to become more sensitive to energy. Since everything is energy, people are therefore going to become more aware of their own thoughts, feelings, emotions, behavioral patterns, attachments, and memories, especially the negative ones that have been suppressed. But people are not just going to start noticing their own stuff, they're also going to start noticing everyone else's stuff because energy is fluid. It doesn't have definitive borders. You can think of it like we are all swimming in a gigantic public pool filled with everyone's energy. It's not possible to isolate a section of water for yourself to swim in only because we are all sharing the same water. So feeling other people's stuff is inevitable at this point. For people who have always been sensitive to energy, this is nothing new. The only difference is now it's going to be way more intense because of all this negative stuff coming out, which makes the pool water very dirty. This can be challenging for sensitive and empathic people who have not healed their own trauma. I'll talk about this more in a future episode about highly sensitive people and empaths, but basically, the reason why it's so unbearable for these people to feel low vibrational energies is because when they come in contact with these frequencies, it triggers their own unhealed internal wounds and that generates a lot of pain. The temporary band-aid approach is to put up a psychic shield or avoid people altogether. But the real and more permanent solution is to do inner work and heal the unconscious traumas. For people who have never been sensitive to energy and have only existed within 3D reality, this sudden expansion of awareness is going to be 
extremely challenging as well. As these people plug into the energy field for the first time, they're not going to start feeling things at a level one. They're going to start plugging into the field and start feeling things at the intensity it is currently at, which is more like a level 10. This is because energy is very dense right now from everyone's problems being pushed out. Basically, these people will be going from being numb and feeling nothing at all to suddenly being sensitive and feeling emotional pain at a level 10. As you can imagine, that is going to be very traumatic. An increase in sensitivity also means people are going to start tapping into their spiritual gifts and psychic abilities more. This can come in the form of telepathy, supernatural experiences like seeing non-physical beings, extremely vivid dreams that feel very real, accessing different dimensional realities, or having weird things happen that the mind cannot make sense of, such as time warping. These are all signs of a paradigm shift where we are changing the way we understand reality and how we experience life. More specifically, we are becoming multidimensional and connecting into the spiritual world more, which, by the way, has always been there. For people who have never ventured outside of 3D life, suddenly reconnecting to their multidimensional self and having spiritual experiences will shock their psyche in a major way. A spiritual awakening is not all rainbows and butterflies. It can be extremely traumatic and cause people to have mental breakdowns. There's actually a term for this called spiritual crisis or spiritual emergency. It's when a person has a sudden profound spiritual experience that shatters their lifelong beliefs about self and reality. It creates extreme psychological stress that can put people into a state of cognitive dissonance or even psychosis. Even people who are considered spiritual may also have a psychotic break if they have a lot of unhealed trauma. That's because people with trauma are usually not grounded in their body or mind. Intense mental and energetic pressure, like what we are experiencing right now, can push these people into an extreme spiritual state where they lose touch with reality because they were never quite present to begin with. This is the dark reality of going through a spiritual awakening. When this happens on a global scale, it can look like the world has become mentally ill. But the real explanation is people are showing signs of extreme mental stress from having a spiritual awakening and not be given the tools, support, or education they need to move through it in a healthy way. So the next time you find yourself or others in a very vulnerable state, just remember what's really going on. It will help you find compassion for yourself and others. If you're feeling a little hopeless right now because of the way the world looks, I hope you can have faith that the future is indeed going to be beautiful. It may be hard to see that right now, but there are small signs of positive change already taking place. These signs are very subtle and barely noticeable because change has to happen on a grassroots level. That kind of movement takes time and a lot of effort to gain momentum. Real change will not come from big corporations, political parties, celebrities, or the rich. These people have had many opportunities to use their money, time, connections, influence, and platforms to genuinely help humanity and turn this planet around. But have they done that? No, they have not. So if you're still waiting on them to lead change, you're going to be waiting for the rest of your life and likely still not see it. Change has to come from humanity. When regular, Everyday working people decide to open their eyes to the truth and come together by doing their share of the work, that is when we will start to see positive change take place in the world. What you can do right now to contribute to that is to put your time, energy, and money towards your own personal growth and spiritual development. Or you can use those resources to support other regular people who are working to bring radical change in their area of expertise. You'll recognize them when you see them. Remember, 
We are in a paradigm shift, which is about changing the way we look at things, do things, and how we solve problems. If something looks the same, feels the same, and sounds the same to what you've always known and heard, that is probably not the answer. For example, I know I'm here to introduce something very different within the healthcare field, where I incorporate spirituality, energy, and music into health, healing, and medicine. I have no idea how it's going to turn out, but it doesn't really matter because I genuinely love what I do, and I just want to help reduce some of the pain and suffering I know so many people are experiencing right now. I am confident that there are other bright souls spread out all over the planet who are also here on a mission to make this world a better place in their own unique way. I know many of them will be pioneering radical change over the next few years in a variety of industries such as agriculture, environment, education, finance, construction, and public utilities. A paradigm shift is a marathon. It's not a sprint. So you have to be ready for a long haul journey and you can't expect to see positive change right at the beginning. In the meantime, you can do an inventory on your life and see where you're putting your time, money, and energy. Are you making choices with your resources to support this paradigm shift, or are you feeding the old dystopian machine? If your choices are feeding the machine, then start changing them today. That is how you can begin contributing to the positive change you're hoping to see and doing your part in building the world you want to live in. Then add in the inner and outer work to change your own life and you'll find yourself shifting into the utopian world faster than you can imagine. Regardless of how bad things may seem in the world right now, I have faith in spirit. Spirit is actually the wild card. When your logical mind thinks it's going to be a losing battle, remember that the wild card has not been played yet. I don't know what exactly it'll be, some people think it's going to be aliens landing, but I'm honestly not so sure about that. All I know is the impossible is possible when it comes to spirit. So it's definitely not a losing battle because anything can still happen. Spirit has a few tricks up its sleeve and you have to learn to trust its intelligence. The one I'm thinking of right now is pure unconditional love. Unconditional love is a powerful frequency you can generate from your own heart. It can heal and perform all sorts of miracles. It's also something the dark forces are deathly afraid of and something they are trying to suppress in humanity. So whenever you're feeling hopeless in life or find yourself being gobbled up by darkness, simply connect into your heart and do your best to come from a place of love as you deal with whatever problems you're facing. I know deep within my soul that everything will turn out beautifully and that the ending will be a happy one for humanity. But until we get there, and it will take a while, we need to mentally prepare for tough times and remember to consciously choose love over fear in every moment. If we do that, spirit will take care of the rest. I'll see you in the next episode.